My name is Chris Collins with Dennis and & Yarning and for the last three days we've been here in Ketchikan, Alaska aboard this latest delivery from Christensen Yachts, a 2020 164 foot motor yacht. The last time I was here was in 2019 on a client's yacht that was delivered by Westport. We did an inaugural cruise around Alaska, ended up in Ketchikan. Prior to that was about 20 years ago when I was a first officer on a 44 meter motor yacht and we arrived at this exact same port. We just got back from a six hour cruise through some of the most serene settings on earth, which gave us the perfect backdrop to showcase Jackpot. Built to ABS classification, this 570 gross ton super was designed to travel the globe and represents the very best that North American shipbuilding has to offer on the global stage. The renown of both her builder and well-established quality of the 164 foot range has played a crucial role in the longevity of the series. As I've already mentioned, Jackpot comes in at a full 164 feet from bow to stern and boasts an almost 30 foot beam. When you take into consideration these dimensions, you'll see that she has a rather reasonable draft of 8 feet. She's built large enough for weeks of cruising in some of the most remote areas of the world, like Alaska, yet still falls within a range of yachts that can cruise the more shallow waters of the Caribbean. In terms of accommodation, Jackpot features six guest staterooms that can sleep up to 16 at night. Later on in today's walkthrough, I'll be showing you these spaces that include a stunning on-deck master with Christensen's signature hull side windows and then making our way to the lower accommodations that will look out just above the waterline. One of my favourite aspects of this yacht's design is her full beam sky lounge. This is the main space on board where you can most appreciate the interior volume she carries. To me, the highlight of this space is the most elegant wet bar on board. Not only does it set the stage for the style you can expect throughout, but it also clues you into the fact that this yacht is all about the view. This brings me to the second thing I love about her design, the use of glass. Running down the sides of the vessel are chemically treated windows that make nearly any space on board the best seat in the house. Whether you're taking it slow in one of the yacht's many living areas, or celebrating with a multi-course formal meal at her massive dining table, Jackpot makes every occasion stunning. Throughout the yachting industry, the name Christensen is synonymous with charter. As I've already explained, this soup yacht can sleep 16 guests while accommodating 11 crew members in six different cabins. Anyone working aboard has access to a ton of storage and all the benefits that come with working on this overbuilt global cruiser. For example, the main galley is located on the main deck and was virtually designed for charter and to make any head chef happy. On most yachts, this would be enough. However, this 164 features a full second galley on the lower level where a cruise chef can also be working at the same time. From the stonework and millwork all the way to the perfected shape of a semi-displacement hull, this yacht represents what so many across the globe have come to expect from Christensen. Elegant timelessness and rugged dependability. Over the next 20 to 30 minutes, Ryan Alexander, who I made this trip with, and myself are going to take you through every inch of this boat. Ryan is going to point out all the details that make Jackpot special, and I'll check in along the way with a few thoughts of my own. We're gonna get things started today up on the sun deck, because this is hands down one of the most versatile areas on board. And what better feature for us to start with than on the aft end where we have a touch and go helipad. As you see it, this is functioning as the tender deck where Jackpot is currently accommodating one of the two tenders found on board, this one with 140 horsepower Suzuki outboard. While the tenders you'll see in today's footage don't convey with the sail of the yacht, they give you a good idea of how large your tender operations can be. This hard bottom rib is deployed and retrieved by the use of a 5,000 pound steelhead marine davit that's built into the bulwark. Located over on the port side, this was even designed with the capacity to lower a jet ski off the starboard side of the yacht. You'll also see that surrounding the aft portion of the sun deck is a substantial polished safety rail. All of these stanchions are removable and add a level of elegance to an otherwise rugged area of this yacht. Also worth noting are the four life rafts that flank the sun deck. Two are found on each side of the vessel, 
all of which are equipped with hydrostatic releases. When you see this area from above and you take into account that this entire deck is an impressive 3,000 or so square feet, you can really appreciate the volume of teak that it took to cover the soul of all exterior deck spaces. Breaking down the guest areas now, we first have a day head that's located on the port side. Just outside of the day head is a fresh, hot and cold water shower that you can use after you jump out of the jacuzzi. Then you step under the hard top, which is best experienced in the early hours of twilight. Not only is this area equipped with LED lighting and a powerful sound system, but there are also AC vents in the matte finished overhead. The temperature controlled aspect of this area is felt first at the massive wet bar located on the starboard side. This guest space features an underlit stone bar top with nine bar stools running along the outside. When you step behind the bar, you can see that there's a ton of storage offered in this area as well as a full range of summer galley appliances. There's a stainless sink mounted under the countertop as well as plenty of refrigeration thanks to a pair of Sub-Zero cold drawers. These are right next to an ice maker and a stainless Lynx grill where you can throw on your fresh catch and enjoy dining in the open air. Opposite the bar is a molded in U-shaped dinette for seven that wraps around a cocktail table. You'll notice that this low profile entertaining space is tucked into the corner, which aids in cutting down the wind and doubles down on the shade. Forward of the dinette is the first of two massive sun pads that cover the forward portion of the sun deck. These provide more than enough surface area for half a dozen or so to lay out in the heat of the day or to grab a seat as the sun starts to go down. These sun pads surround a jacuzzi built for eight, which serves as the centerpiece of the guest experience. On a boat of this size, it can be hard to use every space on board every day, but the jacuzzi is one of the places that you'll always keep coming back to. One of my favorite things about the jacuzzi is the bar fixed along the aft side. This offers a dry option where three more can take a seat and join in on the evening. And you can also see that whether you're in the tub or at the bar, you have a great view thanks to the glass panels that surround the forward end of the sun deck. From the jacuzzi deck, you have a clear line of sight up to the radar mast, which rests above the molded hardtop. The communication setup found here is impressive and is part of the reason that you're always connected in the farthest reaching regions of the globe. First, there are three open array radars that work together to inform the captain of what lies ahead. And then you'll notice the three large sat domes that are located up here. One of these is a VSAT Sailor 100 that provides phone service, and the other two are CTEL HD TV domes. The reason that there are two of these is to make sure that there isn't any signal blockage by the mast when you're at anchor. On the forward side of the hardtop are a pair of high-end, polished Carlisle & Finch searchlights. What's unique about these are the night vision cameras integrated inside. So not only do they help you see in real time when it's getting dark, but the added thermal element makes these all the more essential in this part of the world where floating logs abound. There's even additional thermal imaging thanks to a pair of FLIR night vision cameras that are directly fore and aft. These are integrated in part to give some visibility of the tow tender. Leaving the sun deck, our next stop is down a level where we're gonna make a stop on the bridge deck aft. The first thing that you'll notice on this deck are the removable tender chocks that are bolted down along the aft. This is where the yacht's primary tender is stored on long passages, but at the moment, this tender is in tow. A feature that you can't fully appreciate unless you're standing on board are the support beams in the aft corners that offer additional strength for the helicopter operations that take place on the upper deck. These columns, however, don't block the view offered at the centerline dinette. At this high gloss table, you have seating for 12 to gather around thanks in part to a leaf that expands this table in the middle. Like the sun deck, this area is also air conditioned and has a private built-in bar to service the bridge deck aft. 
The bar is located in the port forward corner and has plenty of refrigeration, an ice maker, and a stainless sink. From here, let's follow Chris inside through a set of automatic hydraulic doors as we step into the Sky Lounge. This is where you get your first look at the materials used throughout the rest of the vessel and the nuances of the design. The other thing I like about the space, as I previously mentioned, is the full beam width of the Sky Lounge. Simply put, the Sky Lounge is stunning. This space was filmed right as the sun was starting to set behind the mountains, and the light pouring in through the starboard side windows really made this area come to life. There's a unique timelessness of the dark American walnut woodwork, which is the first thing that jumps out to you. The best example of how welcoming this interior is can be seen at sunset and the witching hour to follow. Thanks to the eight windows found on both sides of this upper salon, you've always got a great view of your surroundings and no view on board beats the one found here at the bar. In this area, seven guests can take their seats at leather finished bar stools that line up along the outside of a crystal onyx split level bar. In addition to the guest experience, the crew is also going to appreciate working in this space because everything that you need is found right in the immediate area. On the back side, your bartender has access to an undercounter fridge and a designated ice maker. And then to help with the cleanup process, there's a sink that's accompanied by a Fisher and Pekel dishwasher, just an arm's reach away. Another important aspect found behind the bar is a dual zone sub-zero wine cooler where you can store around 30 or so of your favorite bottles so that they're always on hand. Looking opposite into port, we see a treadmill. Again, the view from up here is stunning and at any given moment, this is one of the best places on earth where you can get some exercise. The area that you'll be spending most of your time is at this U-shaped sectional that's offset to port. This seating area is perfect for movie night thanks to the big screen that's mounted on the forward bulkhead. One thing that you should keep in mind is that this yacht is brand new and hasn't been delivered. That means that there's money allocated into the purchase price that allows you to add some of the larger furniture that you would want to make this space uniquely your own. I'd also like to point your attention overhead to the coffered ceilings that add a great amount of dimension to this large Sky Lounge interior. Let's follow Chris forward as we pass through the bridge deck foyer and make a quick stop at the AV controls. Hidden away in this cabinet is one of the most intuitively designed entertainment control systems that you can get. Immediately forward of this is a day head, which is conveniently located. The last thing to point out here in the upper foyer is the third wet bar found on this level. This one is designed for servicing both the guests out on the bow as well as guests that are seated in the wheelhouse. Next we arrive in the bridge, which is where all of the yacht's navigation systems come together at the hands of your experienced captain and crew. Before we break down the helm equipment itself, let's take a quick detour. Aft of the wheelhouse is the captain's quarter, which they'll be pleased to know is finished with the same materials and attention to detail as the guest staterooms that we're going to take a look at a little bit later on. Outboard is the berth that's placed under a large window, and there's plenty of storage found throughout this cabin. At the foot of the bed, we see a vanity that's just a few steps away from the captain's private ensuite head and shower. Now, let's step back into the wheelhouse and break down what we find in here. First, in the starboard aft corner is a guest seating area that's raised above the rest of the space. From here, you have both great visibility and an area where you can lay out some charts and make plans for the day's cruise. You'll note that this raised seating area is finished with teak steps that match the natural teak sole covering the entire wheelhouse floor. Looking over to port, you have the captain's office and all of the tools that you'll need to navigate for weeks away from the dock. With these long passages in mind, it helps that this area is nicely finished with Verde Jada stone and a Herman Miller desk chair. 
Now, let's turn our attention to the helm itself. There are three leather stid helm seats that face mission control, which are fully adjustable. These are the perfect complement to the leather wrapped helm that's just a few feet forward. When you're running this yacht, you do so with seven individual screens that all interface into a Garmin glass bridge. These displays are controlled by twin remotes. One is found in the center helm chair, and the other is located on the dash. Looking to port, we see a FLIR night vision camera control, bow thruster joystick, and the control for jog steering, which essentially replaces the wheel in most circumstances. There are a few redundant systems here that include twin autopilots, rudder angle indicators, VHF radios, and two touchpad controls for the Carlisle and Finch searchlights that I pointed out earlier up by the radar mast. Finally, on the starboard side of the helm are her engine throttles and controls for the radar system. The controls used to operate this yacht aren't limited to what we find at the main helm. As we leave the wheelhouse, you'll see that on both port and starboard are wing stations that offer the captain full control over the yacht as well. In addition to offering an impressive line of sight both fore and aft, the helms themselves are well appointed. Here on the port side, we see a 10-inch Garmin GPS map that's integrated with the bridge, as well as MTU engine throttles and a bow thruster joystick. One of the design features that makes this yacht easy for both guests and crew to navigate is the Portuguese bridge that runs along the front side of the wheelhouse. It's also in this area that we see a molded-in seating area that faces forward. If you aren't stopping up here for a cocktail, you're most likely heading forward up a teak-finished centerline companionway that leads forward and down to the ground tackle. This area is designed to accommodate a tender or even a pair of jet skis, which is what explains how overbuilt this part of the deck is. The gunnels up here are over six feet deep, which provides coverage from the wind as the crew does the important work of setting the hook and deploying the tender. The tender operations start with a 1,200 pound davit that's found centerline between a twin Maxwell anchor windlass system, which draws her anchors. If you know anything about Christensen, you know that these boats were designed to spend a lot of time on the hook and the anchoring system onboard jackpot puts this characteristic on full display. In fact, on the three days that we spent on board, we were at anchor every night in over 100 feet of water. Experiencing the boat away from the dock and getting to see her in action helps paint a larger picture of what Christensen is passionate about and what the team at the yard have been doing since the company's inception. One thing that this builder is known for is their deep well of knowledge on all things technical. From their involvement with the electrical systems and entertainment details, all the way down to the fine adjustments that are made to the hull, this know-how is ingrained in the American builder's legacy. When we were talking about some of the key aspects of this boat from the perspective of the builder, it was quickly pointed out that Jackpot is the fourth generation of the same boat. That means four generations of tweaks and fine tuning, which translate into a fully evolved platform for seeing the world. Now let's jump from one end of the yacht to the other and take a look at the swim platform. Back here at the waterline, you have a diverse space designed to maximize this 164's capabilities. First, we see the same teak decking that covers the rest of the exterior. This helps accentuate the size of the platform, which is the primary point of access to the yacht in a circumstance that might have you staying at anchor or boarding from a floating dock. Looking just forward of this, in a locker is your fuel fill as well as a hot and cold freshwater shower. This is just a few feet away from a molded door that opens to reveal a passerelle. And one other item of note back here are the shore power connections located on the starboard side. One benefit of getting to look this boat over for three days is seeing her in just about every context. 
One of the most elegant forms that she takes is right as the sun sets and all of the exterior lights are flipped on. The name board lights up and takes on a neon glow while a series of underwater lights draw your eye to the stern. It's at this time of day that all of the decks have been washed down and you start to put the water toys away. And this process couldn't be easier thanks to the pneumatic transom door that offers you access down into the lazarette. Stepping down a wide ladder, we arrive in a huge storage area that doubles as the engineer's workstation. Also found down here to starboard is the main power distribution center on board. Looking aft into port, we see a vessel monitoring system screen and the system controls over alarms and tank levels. Just a few steps further on the port side is the engineer's cabin with a private head and shower. Our next stop from here is immediately forward, the engine room. The main attraction in here are the twin MTU-12V4000M53s that power this yacht. These and the other equipment in the area can be serviced relatively easy thanks to the removable diamond plate flooring placed strategically above crucial components. In the starboard aft corner of the mechanical space is the vessel's sewage treatment plant, which is right next to the first of three generators found in the engine room. Over in the port aft corner are the twin Atlas water makers that can each put out 2,500 gallons of fresh, drinkable water every day. Forward of this and flanking each engine are the other two generators. Each one of these is 99 kW. All the way forward and center line in the engine room, we see an 840 gallon day tank. Mounted on top of this is a fuel polishing system, allowing only clean diesel fuel to run through your mains. In all, Jackpot carries 15,300 gallons of fuel that offer this yacht a 4,000 nautical mile range. Her twin MTUs are at their most economical when running at nine knots, but a fast cruise of 14 knots offers you the best of both worlds. When you're out in open water and just trying to get where you're going, this 164 sees top speeds of just under 17 knots. Now we're gonna take a look at the main deck and start breaking down this level all of the way aft. The aft deck is accessed on the starboard side from the swim platform by passing through a transom gate and heading up six steps. Like the other open decks that we've taken a look at, this space is also air conditioned and has a spacious layout. Most prominent back here is the molded in U-shaped dinette with a pair of fixed onyx tables. This is the perfect environment for 10 guests to grab breakfast and take in the view. This deck especially provides a generous panoramic view as you look from one side of the space to the other. You also won't be surprised to find yet another wet bar, which is located in the port forward corner. This one features the same underlit onyx bar top that we've seen elsewhere, as well as three bar stools. The standard bar setup is found here with an ice maker, two sub-zero drawers, and a stainless sink. In terms of access, the aft deck offers you a few different directions in which you can head. There are stairs up on the starboard side leading to the bridge deck aft, an area that we've already visited, and there are also port and starboard boarding gates for when you're boarding by way of a ladder from the dock. Most important though are the side decks that flank the entirety of the main deck. On the starboard side is the guest companion way that leads forward to the main deck foyer. And then over on the port side, where we see Chris walking forward, this side deck is primarily for the crew, as it leads directly into the service area of the yacht, as well as forward and up to the bow. Wrapping up on the aft deck, we're next gonna take a look inside at the salon. As you step inside, you can immediately see the similarities between the design elements of the two main living areas on board. 
The main difference between the Salon and the Sky Lounge, however, is how much gets left to the imagination. An example of an empty space that the owner is going to fill is found once you step into the greeting area that's adorned with backlit honey onyx panels along the walls. This would be a great place to add a coffee table where you can set down your phone and keys or a seating option where you can sit down and take off your shoes. Forward of this is the seating area and as minimal as the decoration is in here, the simplicity really works in the salon's favor. This allows the windows, five on each side, to steal the show. The yacht's second option for movie night other than the Sky Lounge is this plush U-shaped sofa that faces an 80-inch TV. Here, four can sprawl out on this couch comfortably. Before you transition to the living area of the salon in the evening, you'll most likely have spent a few hours gathered in the formal dining room. The thing that jumps out at you first is the stained mahogany table and blacked out glass panel inlays. Seeing it without table settings can undersell how impressive this table is, but you get a pretty good idea of how much space there is for table settings and course after course of gourmet food. You simply cannot overcrowd this dinette. This Christensen's galley was designed to handle a full charter schedule wherein every bed is filled and there are 16 mouths that need to be fed. This is a tall task for any yacht's galley and this one stands up to the test. By the entrance, we have a few essentials like this Miele coffee maker, an undercounter ice machine, and this top of the line Sub-Zero refrigerator freezer. Directly across from this is one of two cleaning areas where the majority of the plating also takes place. Over here, whoever is doing dishes has the best job in the galley thanks to this large window in the superstructure. Also found in the immediate area are two Miele dishwashers and the first of two trash compactors. When it comes to cooking, your head chef spends most of their time at two Wolf induction cooktops that have a pair of convectional ovens below. Also located right here is the second trash compactor and two food warming options with an undercounter heat lamp and two warming drawers that are found below the countertop. Just off of the galley is a ton of storage provided by two different pantries. When this boat leaves for weeks at a time, you'll be taking full advantage of this available space. From the galley, you have easy access down into the crew quarters, but this is an area that we're gonna come back to and visit in more detail at the end of today's walkthrough. Now we're gonna follow Chris as he exits the galley and makes his way forward towards the master. But before we get there, we first have to pass through the main deck foyer. Designed to make a lasting impression, this foyer serves as the one spot on board where not only everything intersects from guest and crew, but also all of the high-end finishes and their durable construction are on full display. Underfoot is a combination of white stone flooring contrasted by a highly detailed black Patoro stone. It's high value aside, there isn't a better selection that can be made to tie the warm walnut and simple polished stainless together. Also located in the foyer is a day head on the starboard side that proves convenient when the boat is full. From here, we're gonna follow Chris forward as we take a look at the master stateroom. Upon entering through a pair of pocket doors, you first enter the office with a pair of desks. And here, the more functional of the two faces out through a window in the hull, assuring that you're reminded of what you're missing out on while you knock out a few emails. This brings us into the living area of the master stateroom. Like the Sky Lounge, she uses the full beam of the vessel. A feature I really like about this room are these two large windows on both port and starboard side that allow in a lot of natural light. The berth faces forward from the aft bulkhead and is flanked by a pair of nightstands. These are finished with beautiful white onyx tops, an element that is also found in the ensuite that we're gonna visit in just a minute. A special touch in here is the lighting and something that Christensen has always placed an extra amount of emphasis on. 
This ensures that none of the subtle details of this space go unnoticed. And as if the lighting package wasn't enough, the huge whole side windows that are found on both sides of the master are really what makes this room stand out. These large windows have shades that are operated electrically in order to provide an extra hour of sleep in the morning. Below the starboard window, we see this plush white sofa. Here you can sit down and take your time as you finish a book with a serene backdrop. And jumping over to the opposite side of the master, we see a vanity that takes up the full port side. Located at the foot of the bed is the master's TV with entrances into the ensuite found on either side. The expansive ensuite head and shower is unlike any of the others that you'll find on board. There are a few distinct characteristics, such as the heated floors underfoot and the ornate details around the outer edge that fall in line perfectly with what you can expect from here on out. Another thing that I love in here are the skylights found overhead that add natural light into the space. Other notable elements of the master ensuite are his and her sinks that share a wide vanity, as well as a centerline shower stall that's found just opposite. There are two other stalls in here that each have separate heads and feature frosted privacy glass. And then the last thing I want to point out in here is that there are his and hers cedar lined walk in closets on each side of the ensuite. As we depart the master, let's follow Chris as he makes his way below decks, where we're going to take a look at the remaining guest accommodations. Our first stop down here is the VIP stateroom. I filmed this cabin after sundown to give you an idea of how well lit these cabins are and how homey these spaces feel after hours. Upon entering and passing your closet storage by the entrance, you step into the living area of the VIP that features an aft-facing king berth, which is opposite this cabin's TV. Sound dampening wall coverings and the same ornate walnut woodworking that we see throughout the rest of the yacht make this space welcoming and are a part of what makes this the quietest Christensen built to date. On the port side is the most bold ensuite of the yacht that's been appointed with green onyx on both floor and walls. In here, your guests are spoiled with not only a standalone tub, but there's also a large glass enclosed shower stall. Immediately forward of the VIP is the first of a mirrored pair of cabins with oversized king berths placed athwartship. This morning, sunrise was on this side of the boat, and the sun flooded this room with light through the same substantial portholes that we'll see in all of the cabins below deck. In these mirrored staterooms, you have three storage options, hanging lockers that flank the berth, as well as a cedar-lined hanging closet along the inboard bulkhead. Right next to this closet is the stateroom's entertainment center. Finally, on the aft bulkhead is the entrance into the ensuite with a large shower stall. Directly across the hall from here, on the starboard side, is a mirrored version of the last stateroom. While we're in here, I'd like to point out that all of the guest cabins feature the same level of lighting as the master. We first have accented features that hang above the beds, as well as flush mounted LED lighting in her leather finished overheads. To either side of the bed are sconces just above the nightstands, and there's even rope lighting underneath the berth on all visible sides. Leaving here and heading forward, we come to the foot of the yacht's main staircase and, more importantly, coffee station on the port side. Appliances found in here include a microwave, a sink, and a pair of sub-zero cold drawers. Another bonus of this area is all of the storage that it offers. Just beyond this nook, we see the bulk of the yacht's fire suppression system, which is located in a discreet closet. 
Normally, you don't have such great access to such an important system. The two final guest accommodations are located forward and feature side-by-side -side berths, one of which is a double and the other is a twin. The beds are separated by a nightstand that has convenient plugs for charging your devices overnight. Another thing that sets these cabins apart are the Pullman berths that drop down, giving you an extra bed for the grandkids. One of the things to appreciate about this boat is the use of stone in every space. Right by the entrance, we have a green multicolored onyx variant where you can set down your belongings without worrying about scratching anything. This same stone is also found in the ensuite contrasted by a yellow onyx out of Iran. Directly across the hall from here is a mirrored version of the last stateroom that has all of the same amenities. None of the staterooms on board are lacking in storage, and these two cabins even have a place where you can sit down and get ready in the morning or check in with the office if the need arises. Leaving here and passing through a discreet door, our last stop is the crew area, which is located all of the way forward on the lower level. Upon entering, we first step into the crew common area and a coveted second galley. As Chris mentioned earlier in today's walkthrough, this is where you can have your crew chef set up, as your head chef provides dinner to the guests at one of the many dinettes found on board. This is a proper galley, not only with a cooktop, oven, and standalone refrigerator, but there's also a huge walk-in refrigerator and freezer on the starboard side. When you first step in, you're in the fridge, and then passing through another heavy-duty stainless door brings you into the freezer. Back in the common area, we see a space that's finished with a durable maple woodwork package and an oversized dinette finished with a Brazilian green quartzite tabletop. The nice thing about this dinette is that there are four points of entry so that no one gets stuck in the middle any more than necessary. In addition to a set of electronics and screens that allow the crew to monitor the yacht's activities, there's also a separate laundry center with three washers and three dryers. Finally, there are four crew cabins found forward of the common area. The aft two are the largest with bunk arrangements and ensuite heads with showers. All of the way forward are the remaining accommodations, also with bunks. These are some of the best crew quarters in class, and your crew is going to appreciate the amount of storage as well as their build quality. Thank you for joining us aboard Jackpot. If you'd like more information about this vessel, please reach out to myself, Chris Collins, or my partner, Tom Convoy.